The majority of the time that people accept Jesus into their heart and to be the Lord of their life is when we've tried everything and we have become sick of ourselves and our ways and are open to receiving revelation that helps us to accept Christ wholeheartedly and to just give up the fight and hand over our hearts and our minds and say, here you are, Lord, do as you will. I surrender all to you. I know from my own personal journey that I got to a place where I was just disgusted and had hit rock bottom with what I had been doing with myself. And although I already had familiarity with the Lord and I regarded him as a person beyond just being human, I knew he held special power, but I wasn't following him and I wasn't trusting him either. And then finally, through a series of events, I just stopped playing hide and go seek with God and gave him everything I had and dropped whatever I was holding on to and allowed him to start working through me and bringing me closer to the truth. Now, there are so certain cases where people accept the Lord into their lives without really having a lot of catastrophic things happen. For instance, I know of children who've been saved at an early age who haven't been through the wide range of things that an adult would go through. So there are those exceptions, but I think for the larger part, people who finally accept Jesus are just done with whatever they've been doing and have been seeking the truth and have become open. You really have to allow sin to run its course, meaning you need to exhaust everything that you think was beneficial to you because you've come to certain points in your life where you admit that this isn't working. My relationships have all been just failures. I feel like something's missing in my heart and I keep running after things and trying to fill this void and nothing seems to be working. And I just have no peace. And everything is just a big mess, really. And until you can finally admit that to yourself, then you're going to think that you are living a good life. You know, you've got your ups and downs and, you know, you, you call the shots and you don't need help from above. And I was there. I held on to my beliefs that I was doing just fine. And it finally got to a point where I was just on a slow downward spiral. It wasn't abrupt, but I was just seeing the progression of my life just go down. I was starting to just drown in my in my ways that I thought were good, but proved to be not the best they could be. And then finally, I said, fine, let's do this. And I broke and I surrendered. And once you actually get to know God and just how good and holy he is and perfect, he's just perfection. Until you start to see God in that light, you may believe that he is a punisher and just out to get you or perhaps he just is nowhere to be found at all like you're just here by accident living your life however you deem to be the best way 
and it just doesn't even occur to you that there might be something greater at work here. I always knew deep down that there was a greater power somewhere out there because I had experienced mercy on my life and there were times when like I went through lots of job losses and like for instance one time I quit a job because of the demands that were put on me which were not good. I felt terrible at this place. Uh, they were putting too much pressure on me. And I finally gave in my two weeks notice and lo and behold, as soon as I finished my last day at that job, I went down the street, I had an interview to, for another place and I pretty much got the job. And at that point I was just renting an apartment. So I didn't, I was under a lot of anxiety. I didn't know, like, am I going to be able to meet the rent? Because I'm about to quit this job and who knows what's going to happen. But I've been through this cycle enough times to not get it, like not to let it get to me. Because I think once you've just experienced something over and over again and it just works out, you don't even have anxiety about it anymore. I mean, you get a touch of it here and there, but it's not overwhelming to the point where, you know, you you can't eat or you can't sleep and it's just the only thing that's weighing on your mind. So I was able to get a job that same day that I left my job. I got a new one and I was able to make my rent without fail. I always have, even between jobs. I never once... Uh, forfeited and said I can't you know keep up with this there was always something that would come up to help me and it's not just on a whim because I do put in the work but I have the faith that although I'm in this situation God will make a way where there is no way and I saw this goodness that was happening in my life that I like no matter what situation I was in I was receiving like so much grace and I knew God was at work, but which God, who, where was he? And I was searching for a long time. You know, I got into a lot of new age stuff. And then when I finally gave my everything to the Lord Jesus, I just felt complete freedom and I knew that I had finally arrived where I had to be. And the story doesn't stop there because I still need to have a relationship with him every day. And his goodness and his love is just so overwhelming in a good way because obviously, you know, who doesn't want to feel nice and protected and cared for and loved and that's how I feel and if I sometimes lapse here and there it's because of my own human nature the flesh it's not God because he's he is always who he is so if I ever feel like you know where are you Lord and it's me I've moved away and once we recognize Jesus for who he is and what he came to reveal to us and we accept that without doubt or unbelief, like we're fully in, then you realize just how much like you needed him all along. But I can't go back, right? What's done is done. And I repent and I have sorrow for being so ignorant and just completely oblivious in many ways to what he was doing. I was trying here and there, I made attempts, but I was still very lost. So yes, we need to allow sin to run its course. And even when I pray for people who 
I know are in darkness, I still pray for them. And I, and I hope that the Holy Spirit does a work in their hearts because even the worst of the worst can always change. And I just have to remind myself that I was in that place as well. I was blind and I need to exercise a level of patience and perseverance. And miracles can happen like in an instant. So no judgment. We are humans and we do that very well, but I'm working on this and I'm also just trusting that, you know, he will work things out whichever way they need to be worked out. I don't know all the intricacies and have no clue what's on the other side, right, of things. So I just let him be God and I'm just his humble servant here to share the good news with anyone I meet and to be just in step with him. And uh, I'm always thankful. I get in my car, I'm thanking the Lord that please get me to where I need to be. I'm, you know, I wake up, thank you Lord for, you know, giving me another day. And just throughout, just throughout the, the course of my, my day to day living, I just reach out to him humbly and just say thank you so much for everything you continue to do. And please just accept my spirit once I vacate this bodysuit. And I pray for my family that they too will be in his glory one day in a perfect place where there is no, no more sin and no more strife and suffering. And I just give it all to him. No more fighting. So until next time, God bless and amen.